Hi there, uh, this is Richard with EdgeCam. What I'm going to show you is a little demonstration on how to uh, set up a right angle head for your vertical milling machine. Uh, if you would, uh, look with me at the features that I've selected. The only one I'm going to work with here for this demonstration is the left hole. We've got a quarter inch hole here I'm going to work with on this part. I've already got the part sitting in the machine. Uh, as you can see with the uh, stock uh, on there and everything. So I'm just going to move over into the machining area. And what we're going to do now is go into our tooling. And I'm going to get a drill. Uh, we'll find a little quarter inch drill here. Uh, I actually made one up little stub drill here a little bit ago. So we'll select that. And I'm going to put that in position one. Uh, I'm going to go to the very far right to angled head. And we'll enable the angled head now. And it says mounting angle. So my mounting angle is going to be uh, 180 degrees. Had to play around with that a couple times to see which way it needs to go. But it is going to be in the 180 degree direction as it's machining that left hole. So uh, the head angle, we're going to set that at 90 degrees. Lower arm length, I've just been playing around with. You can make these whatever you want to. Um, offset, nothing. Uh, upper arm length, four. Lower arm diameter, four and four. Just whatever you want those to be, you can play around with them and see what you think. Now, let's look. Here's our, here's our angled head. Okay. Uh, some of that stuff we just filled in determines what the size and length of this stuff is here. So, so you just play with that and have a good time with it. And that right there, that orientation would be 180 degrees. So zero degrees would be facing to the left. Okay. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, you can you can see it there in the machine looks real real fancy. So uh, the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to just go into uh, drilling my hole. Now, uh, I'm just going to say okay on all this, the depth, everything looks good. Uh, we can take that cut increment, take it or leave it. One thing that I want to show you is really important, and I'm going to explain this a little bit better in just a minute. I want to make sure that you select longhand for your output code. Uh, and I'll talk about that when we go to the CGG and CGD uh, in the code wizard in just a minute. Okay, so we'll go ahead and select that, and uh, I'm going to select my hole here, if I can get to it, there it is right there, come on, come on, there it is, so then you'll see the toolpath right there, zoom back out, and then we'll go to simulation, Okay, so you see that it simulated that toolpath uh, for that hole. Now, let's go to NC code, and I'm going to generate the toolpath. Okay, now you're going to see here, uh, looking at this toolpath, let's break it down just a little bit. Uh, we're starting out X, uh, negative. Then we're going down to Z, negative 375. That's the depth of the hole from the top. Uh, y, zero. Then it's going to go to, it's going to feed X into the part, wrap it back out, feed in. Uh, all these movements are in X, which that would be what you would want. Okay. Now, there's a couple things that we've got to do to get there. First of all, you remember that I said that in the machine, in the hole cycle, be sure and select longhand. Okay, now the reason for that is when we go to our CGD, we have to do something to our machine in order for this to happen. Uh, we have to make an adjustment in the multiplane coordinate system output. Typically, you're going to see this set as CPL coordinates. Okay, in this case, we need to set it to machine coordinates. 
so that it will allow us uh, to use the the uh, it'll allow the machine to recognize the CPL that it's in. Uh, I didn't show that to you. I'll go back to that in just a minute. But it also says here in the help menu uh, when we're looking at that uh, multiplane coordinate uh, machine coordinates. Okay, this this code always outputs the machine coordinates corresponds to the machine's x and y linear axis. This note right here. CPL names, uh, I'm sorry, note that under this setting, whole CAN cycles are only supported in a plane that is parallel to the initial CPL. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That are parallel to. So in this case, it was perpendicular to. So uh, we would need to have, we would need to have uh, taken CAN cycles out for it to run properly. Uh, otherwise, it's going to output uh, unwanted. So, just change that. What I did on this was I took my sample mill and I just copied it uh, and changed the name to it to a right angle, a right angle machine. So if I'm going to use a right angle head, I'll just call up this CGD or this uh, this post and run it for that reason and for that only really. So anyway, uh, we'll go back here and we'll look. You'll see the different CPLs that it's created. Okay, and you'll see that the CPL here has a z-axis in line with the tool okay but it's still outputting as though it was in the top cpl x y and z as according to that okay hope this helps